Over 50 million Americans, that's more than one-sixth of our population, occasionally suffers from acid reflux, commonly known as heartburn. Well, one doctor made it his mission to put out the flames once and for all. I was born in Cuba, and the Cuban diet, by definition, is rice, beans, pork, you know, and then fried pork with rice and beans. So seriously, I don't think I saw a vegetable till I was 24. So I thought that getting heartburn was just a natural response to eating. So that type of starchy food is something that doesn't lead to good digestion. It's something that basically sits in your stomach and just ferments. So it's very easy to have heartburn from that. So I became a doctor and a specialist in digestive diseases. And here I was giving my patients advice on heartburn and irritable bowel syndrome, telling my patients how to better themselves and what to do. And I wasn't following that advice myself. I mean, I was a total hypocrite. And then one day, I, I really woke up and took a good look at myself and realized, you know, I'm no different than my patients. I have to walk the walk. And when I finally started taking that advice, eating correctly, well, not only did I lose 30 pounds, but it really changed my whole life. My heartburn that I thought was just going to be part of my life forever went away after I started losing weight. I started exercising more. I started feeling much more in charge of my life, considering there are 40 million people in the US that have the same symptoms that I did. I wrote a book about it. I know that these simple changes can get rid of your heartburn and your acid reflux and just give you a better, healthier, more enjoyable life. Well done. Well done. He's been on our show many times before. We're always excited to have him. Please welcome back Dr. Jorge Rodriguez. And I'm glad we're talking about this because yeah. most people think heartburn and they think, I just have to take medicine. Mm -hmm. There's me I'll just take medicine. But that is not always the answer. No, as a matter of fact, it's something that could be pretty harmful to people. These medicines work. And if you read the medications, they're only supposed to be taken for a short period of time to relieve you know, the inflammation. If you have true esophagitis or an ulcer, you're supposed to take them only for six to eight weeks max. So people that overuse these medications, have a higher incidence of anemia, of osteoporosis, and of hip fractures. That's been proven. So walk us through this animation, Dr. Rodriguez, of what we're dealing with with GERD. All right, so here we have somebody that's eating some unidentified food, and <laughs> it's going down into the stomach. The natural response when it hits the stomach is for acid to be made, right? So there it is. It hits the, the green acid and bile. It gets dissolved. If you eat too much or if you don't wait before you lie down, the acid will come up sometimes all the way to your vocal cords. Sometimes it can come down into your lungs and give you asthma. But there's one part of the esophagus, the lower part right there, that is constantly barraged with acid if you have reflux. And that can turn into precancerous or cancer of the esophagus. So that burning sensation, if you're having it each and every day, that is literally acid eating away your tissue. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Jorge, you, you have some simple ways to stop heartburn without relying on those pills. Sure, and right? you may have heard them all, but these are not difficult to do. The first thing is let gravity work for you, which means don't go to bed or lie down right after you eat. And if you do go to bed, prop the bed up. I don't mean just put a pillow so that it bends your, your neck. That does, that's not doing it. So put something under the bed. Put it at an angle. Number two, portion size. Hello. <laughs> All right? <laughs> the, it looks great, yeah, look but it's not thing. great for what you. The is that? That's like a multi-layered, like super, super duper, quadruple, that's quadruple. Yeah. That's your last that's meal eight ever. Patties. Wow. Uh, that's, that's, you know, that's Whew. not good for you. Yeah. Remember this rule of thumb. If you eat too much, your stomach will expand, your esophageal sphincter will open up, it'll be easy for things. All right, what this means is you can have alcohol in moderation. Don't drink a lot during your meals. Drink either before or after. You don't want the meal size to be too much. So chew your food. Your grandmother was right. You want it to be, this is the first, this is where digestion begins. Chew it so that you, it'll be emptying out of your stomach a lot more quickly Good. instead of whole chunks. All right, admit if you're overweight, that you're overweight. Loosen your belt. The same thing as with, if, if you have a lot of things pressing on you, you're gonna get reflux. Try to eat like this. That's what you're doing. Try to sit up straight. Again, let gravity be your friend. That's ladies, that's great. They're quick learners. It'll go down as opposed to being cinched at the waist. 
all right? Take your time to eat. You know, Europeans have only 6% heartburn as opposed to Americans at like 40 or 50 because the meal is a bigger production. You take a lot longer in eating, all right? And then this one, all right, is again, don't, don't get hunched over. I mean, I, I did a bike ride once right after like 100 miles after lunch. I thought I was gonna die because you're in that position. So not, not a good thing to do. Late night eating. Right? Uh, it's bad for you. Why? Because you make your acid a couple of hours after you eat, and again, you're lying down soon after that. Do something active after you eat. Again, let me go back to older cultures. Usually after meals, they take a stroll, they walk around. Spend time with your kids. Don't go straight to the couch and watch TV. All right, don't forget to remember. <laughs> so what that means, Cut the stress down a little bit in, the li in your life. The more stress, a little bit more acid is formed. Alcohol, you can have small sips, okay, not large you. amounts. Nicotine and cigarettes is one of the worst things you can do for reflux. It increases acid, it opens up the gates. It's really easy for reflux to come out. And what's great about your solutions is they're not just good for reflux, they're good for overall health. These solutions are really great and nice. everyone in the audience is going home with their own copy of Dr. Jorge's book, The Acid Reflux. And coming up, a diet trend that is not only dangerous, it could be life-threatening. We'll tell you what it is next, and then later on, the lies you could be telling yourself right now about your heart health, the truth, you can't afford to miss it.